page three has some heat calculations. It's based on the Q equals M times C times delta T. Oh, I like to put it into a round little buddy sometimes, but I don't know if we'll really need it. Q is M C delta T. Uh, Q is heat. M is the mass. C is something called specific heat, so it doesn't really make much sense why it's a C. And delta T is the change, the difference in temp. So when this says how much heat is needed, I'm trying to find Q to raise the temperature of 7 grams. Let's see, Q equals mass, 7 grams, times what's the specific heat of aluminum? 0.22. times what's the change in temperature. I'm going to raise it, let's see, I'm going to raise it 15, so it's simply 15 degrees Celsius. 15 times 7 times 0.22 equals 23.1 grams and grams, Celsius and Celsius, all crossed off. Calories is the only thing left, 23.1 cal calories calculate the heat lost. Once again, it looks like we're looking for another using the same formula, Q equals MC delta T, and we're after heat, so we just need the M, the C, the delta T. What's the mass? 22.5 grams. What's the specific heat? Different substance. Different substances heat up at different rates, so that's why they have different specific heats. But this one is going to go from 100 to 70. How much did that delta or change temperature? 100 minus 70 equals 30. 100 minus 70 is 30. So it's 30 that needs to go here. 22.5 times 0 0.03 times 30 it should get 20 and a quarter. 20.25 calories. Next section. It's just this simple. Where's a proton? What's its charge? Protons are in the nucleus. Their charge are positive. We could write the word positive or simply plus. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. Their charge is, well, not anything. So it's zero or neutral. I'll just write positive. And electrons are outside or orbit. Outside orbit nucleus or outside the atom. And they are negative or negative charge. Next page. Given the temp below, create the time versus temp graph. Make it a line graph. Once you have completed the graph, answer the questions. So I need to take that information and graph it here. So... I start to analyze. Well, they got everything labeled for me as far as the x-axis in minutes, and the y-axis must be in degrees Celsius. And so all I have to do is put in the, um, the points. Uh, I'll pretend that all these little numbers are exactly on the line. 1 is minus 20. 2 is minus 10. 3 is 0. 4 is 0. 5 is 0, 6 is 0, 7 is 5, 8 is 12. So it's a little bit up here. 9 is 18, 10 is 22. I'm kind of eyeballing these. 11 is 28. I'm seeing a pattern. It's going pretty predictable. 12 is 34. It's like we're going to keep going. Let me read ahead. When I get up to 26, I'm going to be at 100. So if I go up to 26, and I go up to maybe 100 right here, and then it's going to stay 100 for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. So I'll bet you this was going to kind of go, and it was on its way over. Am I cheating? Or am I just trying to be logical? So that if I drew this in, it would look like this flat spot. This flat spot. And then it goes up to 102, 104, and 105. 
up again. So I have two flat spots and three slopes. Next step, location of where is it solid, where is it liquid, where is it gas. Okay, well, it's water, solid, water solid down below zero. When it's between zero and 100, it's a liquid. And once it gets above 100, it's a gas. Now the other thing I've been looking at is what about the flat spots? What do those represent? Well, they either represent, well, depending on if it's getting warmer or colder, at this point down here at, at zero degrees, this is at the freezing stage. But wait, it's also the melting stage. Up higher, this is at the condensation stage if we're cooling off, but it's at the boiling or evaporation stage or vaporization stage if we're going up. Label, I think I got all that. And that's the end of that one.